Hello again, and welcome to another exciting, hopefully, episode of Social Studies. All right, this is um, 2.14, the notes about the 13 colonies, the three colonial regions. And I'm going to try to go, there's a ton of material here, I'm going to try to go kind of quickly. And the important things I will spend more time on in class, but this will help you get through the notes at least. So this should be the note sheet that says 13 colonies, three colonial regions up at the top. All right, so remember colonies are people who live in a distant land and are governed or ruled by their mother country. There is a reason I say that all the time. It is something you need to know. Now by the 1700s, the colonies were all, there were 13 English or British colonies located on the east coast of North America over here ruled by their mother country over here. And we went through in class, or we will, the sort of setup of how the government, how the colonies were governed by their mother country. Okay, now we're going to look at the various regions of the, how that we divide them into based on their culture, which remember is based on their environment. So there's going to be three of them, the New England, the Middle, and the Southern Colonies. This is a little more blurry than I hoped, but you get the idea here. New England is going to be up here, Middle is going to be in the green in the middle, and down here in the bottom in the pink will be the Southern Colonies. And we're going to begin with the Southern Colonies because the Southern Colonies were the first colonies started in North America. The first attempt was Roanoke, the first colony was Jamestown, and so we're going to start there. There will eventually be five southern colonies. If you have not filled these in yet, I will give you a chance in a second. Um, I'll show you a map that has them, and you can copy them down. There we go. So you can pause there, and we're looking at these southern colonies. There's five, Maryland, Virginia, North, South Carolina, and Georgia. You can pause and write those down, but I'm going to go on. The southern colonies. Oh, here's another map that shows you the southern colonies. If you want to locate them, they are the ones in green. I have multiple of these maps because I was going to have you, and I may have you color in a map that shows them. But we are focusing on the southern colonies, which begin in 1607 at Jamestown. And slowly over time, um, more and more people will come, and they will take a while to get going, but they will slowly grow. Now, the southern colonies will grow much slower than the New England and the Middle Colonies, fewer people will come over to settle in the Southern Colonies. And that's partially because of their environment, which we'll see. But Virginia was the first, started in 1607 with the Jamestown Colony. Its population and economy grew throughout the 1600s and 1700s thanks to tobacco, which became a very important cash crop. And they became the largest and wealthiest of the colonies. So Virginia is kind of the exception here. The other southern colonies are going to be a little bit less population. And, um, well, they will be wealthy if you are a rich, wealthy plantation owner. Um, just to buzz through the colonies real quick so you have an idea, but we'll do this in class. Maryland started by Lord Baltimore as a home for Catholics. Carolinas were given, they, these were set up... Um, Basically, they started as a gift from King Charles to uh, some of his friends who had supported him during the British Civil War. They will be divided just to become more manageable. Georgia starts as a home for debtors and as a buffer zone to keep them safe from Spain. Um, and there you go. So the southern colonies, really, what do you need to know about them? You need to know that they have a long growing season. Things grow well here. Farming and agriculture will be important. Growing what are called cash crops. Tobacco is a big one. Tobacco, indigo, and rice. The other thing you need to know is that this economy over the years becomes really, really dependent on slavery. Slavery is a huge part of life in the South. Not everybody owns slaves. Remember that. Not everybody owns slaves. The most of the slaves are going to be owned by these wealthy plantation owners who own huge, huge farms called plantations where the slaves provide the labor. And these plantations were almost like little towns in a way, but instead of being ruled by a government, they would be ruled by the planter, the slave master who owned 
all of these, all of this land and all of these people. They would be the ones up here at the top of the Southern Society Pyramid, the planters. Um, sort of and then below this you can see the bottom is going to be people who are slaves and we'll go through this in class a little more but just to give you an idea plantations this is a word you need to know large farms grew cash crops and planters were not the people out working in the field they were the wealthy plantation owners who had most of the land slaves wealth and power in the south as opposed to the slaves. These are some photos of plantations and slave labor I'm going through there. Okay, so for the note sheet, um, okay, the note sheet section about the southern colonies, again, I'm not putting it up there completely, but I will tell you this. The words that are blue or green on this sheet are the ones that you pretty much have to fill in the blanks. There might be a few blanks, but if you read along, this goes in the exact order. So the southern colonies are more rural, fewer cities and villages. Rural means like countries spread out, long land, long areas between your nearest neighbor. Plantations were these large farms that grew cash crops. Three examples of cash crops that were important in this time, tobacco, indigo, and rice, or tobacco, rice, and indigo. The planters, I already talked about them. Slave labor was very important. There were many, many slaves in the South, and that continues to grow over time. Now, how is it possible in many places that there were more people at being held in captivity as slaves than there were slave owners? Well, they used, the fact is the planters, even though there weren't many of them, they had all the power. And the government passed laws called slave codes that kind of made slavery possible, took away rights from people who are slaves, etc. Also, this would not have been possible without racism. Racism was something that was very prevalent in this time. And basically, the idea was that these people are okay to enslave because they are not as good as us, where they are less than us. So it's okay to treat them as slaves. And then all of this is enforced through violence. The, the southern colonies were a very violent place. And that's really how they kept people in line. They imported, on the bottom of your notes, it says they imported clothes, furniture, etc. They relied on imports, and they had less emphasis on education, partially because they're so rural and they, they are so spread out that it wasn't practical to have public schools where for the whole town because there weren't really many, many towns. The wealthy plantation owners would, would usually hire wealthy planters to teach their sons how to be planters, and then that would get passed down. There's, I think that covers all that warm climate, long growing season, fertile soil, that's important. Okay, going on to the middle colonies. The middle ones are the ones conveniently located in the middle. You can copy down the names of the four middle colonies. Now it's a little confusing here because you gotta look closely at Delaware. But we have New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware are the four middle colonies. Hey, okay. here you can see Delaware is a middle colony. Maryland sort of wraps around it there is a southern colony. Oh, did I say middle colonies? Oh, I messed up the slideshow. So we're going to jump up to the New England colonies, I guess, next. New England ones are the ones up here in the northeast. Massachusetts, notice, is two different parts. What we call Maine was still part of Massachusetts until 1820. So this is not Maine. That is Massachusetts. There are two different unconnected pieces of Massachusetts. And then you have New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Connecticut are the others. Okay, the New England colonies, home of the New England Patriots. Yes, it is part of the United States. And they begin in 1620 with Plymouth. And you can see this was the Pilgrims, 1620. Um, the Massachusetts Bay Colony will begin in 1630. Now, both of these places very quickly um, expand to other towns and villages throughout New England. And some of eventually what was all Massachusetts, 
Bay Colony originally will get subdivided into Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, mostly because of different religious beliefs. And then eventually the Massachusetts Bay Colony will absorb the Plymouth Colony. Okay. Um, it's a good reminder just that here to locate yourself where we are. St. Lawrence River up here. This is going to be New France. Here's the Hudson River right here. This would be New Amsterdam, New Netherlands colony. And then over here would be the home of the Iroquois. I have lots of maps here. All right, we can skip right there. Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay, religion is very important. Something to know, know about the New England colonies in general is that religion is going to be important. People come here seeking religious freedom, but not for everybody, only for themselves, only for their freedom to impose their religious beliefs on anyone who lives there. They are not going to be tolerant, for the most part, of other religious beliefs, especially Plymouth and Massachusetts Bay. Um, they will merge in 1691 to form Massachusetts. The other colonies in the area, Rhode Island, which is a tiny colony, um, and interestingly enough, just this year in 2020 election day, they changed the official name. They voted to change the official name. The official name all these years has been the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and the Providence Plantations part of it because of because we have come over the years since 1636 to strongly associate the word plantations with slavery, we, they decided to just go with the state of Rhode Island from now on. That's just a little trivia that I probably shouldn't have wasted a minute on, but it's kind of interesting. All right, they were established in 1636 after Roger Williams and Anne Hutchinson were banished from, from the Massachusetts Bay Colony because of religious dissent. Dissent means disagreement. Disagreement, dissent, that's a good word to know. We will talk about Rhode Island more in class. Same with Connecticut, also started for religious reasons because basically what was the Plymouth Colony and Massachusetts Bay Colony, if you disagreed with their ministers and disagreed with question their religion, they would banish you. They would kick you out of the colony. They were fortunate enough that they didn't necessarily kill you, but they would go to have you live in the wilderness and this is who led, led to additional colonies, such as Connecticut, which will have the first written constitution in America and will later ensure religious freedom for people. Um, same thing as Massachusetts Bay, it starts, I'm sorry, New Hampshire starts as part of Mass Bay. It's going to separate. You don't need to know anything about New Hampshire. Just know that it's there. Okay, da, da, da. the New England colonies, there you go. This is to help you fill in their notes. You can read over that and use this to fill in the notes sheet. Now we'll talk about the Salem witch trials either in another video or another or in class, but the religion, these were, this is gonna show an example. Um, these witch trials, it's going to make people question the wisdom of a religious-based government, which is called a theocracy. It's going to be a series of trials from 1692 to 93. Um, people are accusing one another of being witches, and it's going to lead to the death execution of 20 people, as well as a dog. Um, and it really, it's something that they will look back on just even a few years later and think, what were we thinking? And they sort of lose their mind for a while there. Um, and it really makes people question, like, is it a good idea to have the church have all the power here? Um, the rocky soil, oh, New England walls, stone walls, we will talk about these in class, but it's a good example of showing the rocky soil. Okay, short growing in season in rocky soil. That's something to remember about New England. They have a short growing season in rocky soil. I will probably say that a thousand times at least this year. And as a result of their short growing season and rocky soil, farming's not very profitable. They have small farms. They live close together in these because they can, because they have small farms, because farming's not profitable. The farmers, everyone is still a farmer because you have to have food and there's no Wegmans to run to. So everyone's a farmer, but they have these small farms with little surplus. They basically grow enough just for themselves and their family. Even though slavery is allowed, there's not gonna be much slavery because it's not very profitable. You could add another 
you can if you added a slave to your household it might help you farm a little more land but it's also another mouth to feed and because farming is so difficult it doesn't really make economic sense so even though there will be some slavery in new england it will not be nearly as much as in the middle or southern colonies um, economy is going to be based on small farms, trade, fishing, whaling. You can see these pictures down here, shipbuilding, all important in New England. This is sort of the typical New England village with the church at the center, very plain, basic Puritan church, and a town square, a common area, what we would probably call a park. But you can see this is common. And these are all typical New England scenes of small New England towns. Small silly, da, da, da. oh, self government, an example is town meetings. So, to make decisions about things, the men of the town would get together and meet on a regular basis. And it's sort of like a legislature, except it was kind of open to all, all of the white males in town. They still have New England meet, town meetings today in many places where they get together to discuss. This is a modern New England town meeting. You can see that it is now open to anybody, not just the men. And they discuss, and this is how they make decisions in a lot of these towns. Education is gonna be very, very important in the New England colonies. First college, first high school. Um, this is because they wanted people to be able to read the Bible. They wanted to train ministers and have them read the Bible. Here's a quick summary for you. Let me see if we got everything here. Religion played an important role, especially Puritan. That was what would go right here is Puritan. They wanted religious freedom, but only for their own beliefs, not others. Colonies founded for religion, Plymouth, which is Puritans. No, 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 scratch that out, erase it, sorry. I'm, I'm reading ahead while I'm talking. Plymouth, of course, you know, was the pilgrims pilgrims here, Puritans, Mass Bay. Religious dissent means disagreement led to the creation of other colonies, Rhode Island and Connecticut, or Connecticut and Rhode Island. They offered religious freedom and separation of church and state, which we'll talk about in school. Um, the Salem witch trials is what goes in this blank right here. Salem witch trials. These were trials led to the execution of 20 people. They had a short growing season and rocky soil, short growing season, rocky soil. So they only had small farms, grew just enough to feed themselves and their families, very little surplus, few slaves. Economy based on small farms, fishing, whaling, shipbuilding, trade. Um, I think that's probably everything manufacturing, maybe you could put in there whatever there's room for. Often lived in small cities and villages, often used town meetings to make decisions, example of self-gov. And the last thing below there is education was important. Okay, middle colonies are in the middle. If you have not filled them in yet, they are New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey and Delaware, nicknamed the breadbasket colonies because they grew staple crops, things you use all the time, wheat, corn. They were able to grow a surplus because they had better soil than New England in a longer growing season. Uh, so they had somewhat larger farms, not as much as in the South, but they still, farming is gonna be important. They will be the breadbasket colonies. Um, they are also more tolerant of others partially because remember new york started out as new netherlands which was a dutch colony and they were very tolerant and so we're in the, the middle colonies are not going to be just english people they're going to be a mixture of people from holland from from england from germany um, from scotland from different places in europe and they will bring different cult cultures and religions and people will generally have to get along so they will be at least somewhat more tolerant of others. An example of this is Pennsylvania, started by this guy, William Penn. Um, they, this will be started as a home for people who are called Quakers, a religious group we'll talk about in school. The Quaker Oak Company, this is supposed to be a typical Quaker here that starts, think of Quaker oats as kind of like bread, bread basket colonies, there you go. Population was more diverse. Um, mixed economy, farming and trade, industry, making things. 
They had more slaves than New England, but fewer than the Southern colonies. The middle is kind of a mixture of the two. A mix of rural and urban. They had some of the largest cities, New York and Philadelphia, and they also had lots of farms. Okay, I think that pretty much sums it up. And then just remember that all of the colonies had in common, they were all British. They followed British laws, tradition. They were economically prosperous. They helped Britain's economy, mercantilism, mixture of self-government and ruled by the British monarchy. Slavery was legal in all of them and agriculture will be important in all of them. Um, I think I covered all of this. If not, I will get it in school if you're missing anything, but I'm pretty sure if you go back up to this and this and this, you should be able to fill in all of that. All right, that is all. Sorry I went long. Thank you and have a great day.